Now, if you run or do triathlon, then you will likely have experienced blisters at some point. And if you haven't, then you are extremely lucky because they are an absolute nuisance. I've had my fair share over the years from long runs or running triathlon sockless, all sorts. And as a result, I figured out some pretty good methods of preventing them, which I'm gonna be sharing with you today. Now for this video, I did a little bit of research into blister prevention and well, here is what I got. Keep your feet dry. Well, that's gonna be a bit of an issue for triathlon. Make sure your laces are tied well. well. I guess that doesn't apply to elastic laces. And make sure you wear good socks. I don't even wear socks for half of my triathlon races. Well, this isn't gonna work for triathlon, so let's sideline the triathlon element for now and let's focus on our everyday training runs. And for this, let's just backtrack ever so slightly and actually explain what blisters are and how they are caused. Now, generally they're just from friction of the skin against your sock or your shoe. And this can be from running faster, running longer, foot abnormalities, poor fitting shoes, or even from heat and moisture buildup within your shoe and on your feet. Now, all of this obviously creates friction. And where that friction is happening, there is fluid that is released and produced under that friction point. And that is simply your blister, which is very painful. Well, my first and obvious blister prevention is socks. And it's hardly rocket science, but socks add a layer of protection between our skin and our shoe. But also they play a very important part by wicking moisture away from our skin. And this is really important, particularly for long runs or if you're running in hot environments, because as you sweat and moisture builds up, it's important that moisture is wicked away. Otherwise, your feet start to absorb that moisture and swell, which obviously is gonna create friction. Now, don't fall into the trap of just wearing thicker socks for increased comfort and trying to reduce any friction, because actually that can increase the issue and enhance the problem. You want to go for fairly advanced synthetic fiber socks that are really going to wick that moisture away well. However, if you are still struggling, you can also opt to wear two thin, layer, thin pairs of socks, which actually will move against each other rather than against your skin. Well, my next tip is regarding the lacing and the fit of the shoe. Now you want to make sure that the shoe fits well, but it's not too small. Now, this is particularly important when you're running downhill and your foot might be hitting the front of the shoe. That can be really uncomfortable. So you want to allow for that. Also, as I mentioned before, your feet might swell as you run due to the heat or as they're absorbing moisture from your sweat. So you want to account for that as well so you're not creating any pinch points within the shoe. And that also leads me on to the lacing. You want to make sure that your foot is secure in the shoe, but it's not so tight that it's squashing the foot and again, causing friction and any pinch points. Also, finally, make sure that you allow time for the shoe to bed into your foot and your foot to bed into the shoe. You don't want to launch yourself straight into running a marathon in a brand new pair of shoes. Allow the shoe to soften up and your foot to get used to the shoe. Certainly don't go grabbing a brand new pair of shoes out on race day because that is a recipe for disaster. Well, following on from that, you want to give your feet time to get used to all this running malarkey. And I guess you could call this adaptation for your feet. Don't go from doing 5K runs to suddenly doing a marathon. Not only is that a bad idea from a training point of view, but also your feet need time to build up a resilience to doing that kind of duration and mileage. Over the years, I've built up calluses and all sorts of hard skin on my feet, which isn't nice, but it prevents me from getting any blisters. But even now, if I take some time out from running and then I go and do a long run, my feet really tell me about it. Well, if you do continue to experience some issues, then I do have some other methods that may help. Now, as I keep mentioning, a lot of this is due to the moisture and swelling of the feet. So 
how about some dry powders such as talcum powder? All you need to do is pour a little bit of this within your sock or within your shoe, and that will help to draw up the moisture. But also, actually, the talcum powder acts really well as a little bit of a lubricant between your skin and the sock. Well, on the subject of lubricants, this has to be my go-to method, all jokes aside, Vaseline or petroleum jelly. Now, you can, of course, get running specific lubricants such as Body Glide and such, but I quite like this because you can pretty much get Vaseline or petroleum jelly wherever you go, and it's all the same and pretty cheap. Now, I like to apply this directly to the skin on my foot, to any problem areas, but you can also apply it to the shoe for any areas that cause issues, such as the seams. Now, one thing to note with this, and this has never been an issue for myself, but I've heard people say that you can't wash this out of your socks that easily, and then dirt clings to that area that the Vaseline's been on. Like I say, this has never been an issue for me, and this is probably my preferred choice. But alternatively, you could literally just cover the area. Now, obviously, covering the area is obviously going to protect the area, but it may not help on the whole moisture front. So you could use something like sports tape, first aid tape, moleskin roll, uh, gel bandages, or even just special patches like this one here, specific to running and walking and hiking. Um, or, heck, you could just use electrical tape or duct tape, I don't know, whatever's going to cover it and work. Now, in the past, I've actually used things like moleskin roll uh, teamed with a first aid pad when I do get a blister. So I'll pop the blister, which is debatable, We'll put that first aid patch down and then I'd use something like moleskin rod to then cover that patch and hold it onto my foot. That way, at least then I can get out running again and more or less pain free. Well, this is all very well, but what do we do for triathlon? Well, as we saw at the start, straight away we break quite a few rules within triathlon because as we come out of the swim our feet are wet so we've got that moist issue there straight away on the run we quite like to use elastic laces to save ourselves a few seconds through transition that's not going to hold our feet quite as securely as standard laces and then even we might want to go sockless now on the subject of going sockless this is a very good idea for short distance events perhaps anything under olympic distance to save a few seconds, but be prepared to sacrifice your feet a little. In this instance, Vaseline or petroleum jelly really is your friend, and maybe some talcum powder. Just really apply this to the inside of your shoe, to any problem areas and to any seams. But as we go longer, anything above Olympic distance, and you'll pretty much see all the pros wearing socks. And that's because the fraction of time wasted putting the socks on in transition is outweighed by the comfort and hopefully the reduced risk of getting blisters during that run section. But who'd have thought it I had so much to talk about on blisters? As always, please do let us know what you do to prevent blisters in the comment section below. Maybe have it some different methods from myself. And on that subject, if you do get a blister, what do you do? Do you pop it or do you leave it? It's a controversial subject. I always pop mine, I'm gonna own up to it. I always use a clean pin, obviously, but it'd be great to hear from you on that as well. So please drop that in the comment section below. If you'd like to see more from GTN, you can click on the globe and subscribe. And if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see our socks versus no socks video, just click down here. And if you'd like to find out how and when you should be replacing your running shoes, then just click down here.